Hello and welcome to the lecture on Virginia Woolf's essay, Modern Fiction. In the last part of our discussion, we ended with the question, is life like this, must novels be like this? From this point onwards, the essay becomes a sort of manifesto in which Virginia Woolf seems to be listing out the features of the ideal modernist novel. But at the same time, Woolf does not praise modernist writers uh, entirely because she feels that modernist writers have a lot to learn from other uh, writers of fiction, particularly modern Russian novelists. So, we will uh, look at what she considers to be the important uh, things that a novelist should keep in mind while composing fiction. The modernists are not concerned with dramatic or sensationalist aspects of life. They want to record ordinary life and uh, endow it with literary value and uh, to look at day to day experiences from uh, a very artistic point of view. That is one of the projects that the modernist writers embark on. Uh, for instance, James Joyce in Ulysses has uh, his protagonist. Um, perform uh, very menial tasks uh, and his day to day uh, tasks of brushing and uh, sleeping and defecating become uh, literary events of sorts. So, it is very important to locate modernists within the uh, socio cultural framework in which they were writing, uh, where grand narratives were regarded with skepticism. Uh, and the way in which uh, traditional novels uphold a certain hero and uh, certain characters are glorified or presented as the ideal of virtue or the ideal of vice, these are the conventions of the novel that is brought into sharp criticism by modernist writers. Uh, Victorian social realism to a large extent dealt with characters who were neither entirely good, neither entirely bad. But the modernists uh, take this a step further by trying to record the thoughts and impressions of characters as uh, they react to various situations and circumstances around them. So, here Virginia Woolf says, examine for a moment an ordinary mind on an ordinary day. The mind receives a myriad impressions, trivial, fantastic, evanescent or engraved with the sharpness of steel. From all sides they come an incessant shower of innumerable atoms. Uh, this is an often quoted phrase from this essay. She um, compares thoughts to incessant shower of innumerable atoms and as they fall, as they shape themselves into the life of Monday or Tuesday. So, um, Monday or tu and Tuesday are normal working days uh, in the lives of people. So, Virginia Woolf believes that even on any given day, uh, the mind is bombarded with a series of thoughts uh, which she compares to atoms. So, these thoughts could be trivial, these thoughts could be uh, serious, they could be very uh, frivolous or they could be very deep. So, but it is the job of the novelist to uh, try to understand uh, what their characters might be thinking or feeling uh, at any given point of time. And she believes that if writers actually had the freedom to write whatever they want without any concern for uh, the financial aspect of it or without any concern as to whether it will become a bestseller, then definitely they would uh, create novels, uh, create works of fiction without a love interest or without uh, a tragedy, uh, a, a tragedy track or a comedy track. And this is because she believes that people who try to sincerely represent life as it is would not be concerned with sensationalizing it. They would not see life as uh, a chronological sequence of events that should lead to some grand conclusion. And novels, uh, if they are true to reality, would have no beginning, middle or end, uh, which are definitive. Uh, novels would not 
have to necessarily make their characters get married in the end. Um, novels um, need not introduce uh, element of intrigue just to keep the readers excited and uh, invested in the plot. So, um, this uh, form of writing she feels uh, a writing that is true to reality that uh, is willing to par away or the willing to chisel away all unnecessary trivial things in order to reach uh, the truth of art and life. This kind of writing she feels is spiritual and this is the kind of writing that she feels should be encouraged in the modern times. Um, this is because life according to Wolf is not a series of gig lamps symmetrically arranged. Life is a luminous halo, a semi transparent envelope surrounding us from the beginning of consciousness to the end. So, here you can again uh, read this with reference to the characteristics of modernist fiction that we discussed before. Uh, their philosophy of life is that it is not something that is very neat, that is very ordered, that is very uh, symmetrical. Life can be very chaotic, the minds of people can be very uh, chaotic and it is the task of the novelist to represent uh, this reality as it is without any compromise. Is it not the task of the novelist to convey this varying, this unknown and uncircumscribed spirit, whatever aberration or complexity it may display, with as little mixture of the alien and external as possible? We are not pleading merely for courage and sincerity. We are suggesting that the proper stuff of fiction is a little other than custom would have us believe. So, uh, she poses the question, is it not the task of the novelist to be bold enough to represent this complexity of life, uh, the complexity of the human mind without having to resort to uh, simple formulas just to make their novels appealing to uh, uh, readers. So, what she says here is, we are not pleading merely for courage and sincerity. We are suggesting that the proper stuff of fiction is a little other than custom would have us believe. So, uh, this uh, kind of experimentation with fiction would definitely require courage and sincerity, but it is not just these things that Wolf is concerned with here. She is also trying to understand uh, what constitutes the what she calls the proper stuff of fiction. This is again an often quoted phrase from this essay what really is the proper stuff of fiction? And in the end Virginia Woolf does not give us a definitive answer, but her point is that the proper stu stuff of fiction is not uh, adherence to convention, it is not uh, following blindly whatever was done in the past and became successful. And uh, this kind of blind adherence to past traditions and past conventions according to Woolf uh, would never lead to good works of literature and art. So, this is again reflective of the modernist uh, manifesto, their commitment to making it new. The modernists were people who were uh, rebelling against an older framework of literature and in doing so, they are clearly trying to delineate, they are clearly trying to define a new uh, aesthetic of the novel. And uh, Virginia Woolf sees James Joyce, the Irish novelist as an important pioneer of the form of fiction that uh, will be a very honest representation of life as it is, an honest representation of the changed reality. So, according to Woolf, these new novelists um, led by James Joyce attempt to come closer to life and to pre preserve most sincerely and exactly what interests and moves them. Even if to do so, they must discard most of the conventions which are commonly observed by the novelist. Let us record the atoms as they fall upon the mind in the order in which they fall. Let us trace the pattern, however disconnected and incoherent in appearance which each sight or incident scores upon the consciousness. Let us not take it for granted that life exists more fully in what is commonly thought big 
than what is commonly thought small. So, um, Virginia Woolf is clearly giving a clarion call when using the phrase let us record, uh, let us trace, let us not take it for granted, right. So, she is addressing her contemporaries, not her contemporaries uh, like Wells and Galsworthy and Bennett who she considers to be materialists, but her contemporaries who like her are spiritualists. Uh, so, she believes that these novelists must record atoms, uh, atoms is clearly here a metaphor for thoughts uh, and perceptions as they fall upon the minds of the character and to trace patterns however incoherent or disconnected the reader might feel uh, about this kind of a, a narrative style, the novelist must be committed to it and the novelist must not distinguish between things. Uh, that are too, too small or too trivial uh, to be dealt with in depth. So, the no novelist must not fall into the trap of uh, trivializing things just because they are small and seem insignificant and this is again in keeping with the commitment to representing ordinariness that the modernists adhere to. She then uh, clearly acknowledges the fact that this kind of commitment is not going to have altogether perfect results. Of course, there are many novelists who might fail in their attempts to uh, represent this new reality. Um, there are, uh, there is a possibility that they might not be met with critical acclaim even if they produce works of merit. But uh, it is important that they continue to strive to remain spiritual and to uh, aspire to the truth of life and art. According to Wolf, in contrast with those whom we have called materialists, Mr. Joyce is spiritual. He is concerned at all costs to reveal the flickerings of that innermost flame which flashes its messages through the brain and in order to preserve it, he disregards with complete courage whatever seems to him adventitious whether it be probability or coherence or any other of these signposts which for generations have served to support the imagination of a reader when called upon to imagine what he can neither touch nor see. And uh, she is very clear about her conclusion that James Joyce is a spiritualist. That is because he is concerned with what she calls uh, the flickerings of that innermost flame. This is again an often quoted phrase from this essay. This is clearly a reference to the soul. So, uh, according to Wolf, uh, a truly sincere novelist would be concerned with representing the joy, the sorrow, the anguish, uh, the frivolity, the depth of the soul. And she finds that James Joyce in his quest to achieve this kind of representation is brave enough to uh, do away with inessential descriptions and details of material things. And uh, she sees that it might be difficult for someone like him, uh, who someone who writes like him to capture the imagination of a reader uh, who have very rarely been called upon to imagine what they cannot touch or see. So, uh, it is in the spirit that Virginia Woolf identifies the purpose of fiction. So, um, now readers have been accustomed to internalize uh, fiction that gives them easy answers and simple description of external things as being the best kind of fiction, but she believes that uh, this is not the case. So, she then goes on to talk about the works of Thomas Hardy, uh, particularly his novel The Mayor of Casterbridge and Joseph Conrad, particularly his short story Youth. Uh, in talking about these works of fiction, Virginia Woolf seems to unfavorably compare Joyce to these writers. Now, this might seem as a bit of a surprise because 
So far, Wolf seems to have been praising Joyce's spirituality, his commitment to the truth, his courage in doing away with unnecessary descriptions and details. And while all this holds good, Virginia Woolf feels that his fiction uh, overall is not as good as that of Thomas Hardy or uh, Joseph Conrad. The reason for this, which she slowly seems to uh, reveal to the reader, is the very thing for which she praised him. She praises James Joyce for his commitment to uh, portraying the impressions of the mind as they are, for um, giving importance to small insignificant things, things which are at least considered to be insignificant in the eyes of the world. But it is this very same absorption, too much of it, that leads to the failure which he sees in his work. Now, uh, Virginia Woolf considers James Joyce to be a great novelist, but she is also able to identify his failings. His failings lie in his strengths, um, which is very interesting because James Joyce seems to be too self-absorbed according to Virginia Woolf. And there is a kind of egoism in the work of James Joyce, uh, which tends to confine and shut in life. So, she previously said that the materialists in focusing too much on external things have let life escape, but uh, some of the modernists particularly James Joyce and uh, another one of their contemporaries Dorothy Richardson are too confined, have shut life in, while the materialists have let life escape. the modernists have uh, confined life to the degree that uh, it does not entertain, it does not uh, reveal much about things other than an egoistic version of the self. What is the reason behind this failure on the part of James Joyce to live up to the legacy of writers such as Thomas Hardy and Joseph Conrad? Is it the method? That is the question that she asks. Is it the method? Uh, now, his method is also like Virginia Woolf, the stream of consciousness technique. So, if it is his method, this goes against the modernist manifesto, the idea of this essay being the modernist manifesto. So, when uh, Virginia Woolf asks the question, is it the method that inhibits the creative power? You must uh, preempt her answer, which is clearly it is not the method. Um, the method can be anything, novelists can employ different methods uh, to convey their intentions, to convey their ideas. It is not really the method that um, destroys a work of fiction, it is uh, too much adherence to certain aspects of writing while ignoring the other aspects of writing that are equally important. So, according to her, James Joyce gives too much of importance to the self, too much of importance to impressionistic details, but not enough importance to the soul, uh, not enough importance to the human spirit. Wolf then makes the assertion, any method is right, every method is right that expresses what we wish to express. If we are writers, that bring us closer to the novelist's intention if we are readers. So, uh, method uh, is not the most important thing, method is not the priority, uh, it is something else, right? And what is that thing? According to Wolf, uh, the novelist must have the courage to say what he feels. Uh, to say clearly that this is not what I am interested in, uh, it is rather that that interests me. So, what is this that uh, here in this context? And for Wolf, uh, she believes that the thing that modern writers are and should be most interested in is psychology. Uh, like she says, for the moderns, that the point of interest li lies very likely in the dark places of psychology. At once, therefore, the accent falls a little differently. 
the emphasis is upon something hitherto ignored. At once a different outline of form becomes necessary, difficult for us to grasp, incomprehensible to our predecessors. So, she feels that the modernists are um, dealing with a different thematic concern, uh, which is very difficult for the writers who came before them to understand or to grasp or to evaluate. So, uh, here Virginia Woolf slowly moves on to uh, the form of fiction that she considers to be uh, the ones which British writers must emulate, must be inspired by and that is the Russian method of uh, writing fiction. And she goes on into a detailed description of Anton Chekhov's short story Gusev, in which uh, the writer describes a soldier who is returning to Russia on a, si on a, sh on a ship full of sick people. And uh, over the course of this journey, the title character dies and he is just compared to a carrot or a radish and his uh, corpse is thrown overboard. So, she says this is a brilliant example of uh, conveying a slice of life without unnecessary dramatization, without having to categorize it in, into a tragedy or a comedy. And uh, James Joyce according to her does this brilliantly in certain segments of his novels. Uh, the example that she gives here is the cemetery scene from Ulysses. Uh, in which she believes that um, James Joyce demonstrates his skill as a great novelist. So, in discussing uh, Russian fiction, uh, Virginia Woolf mentions writers such as Dostoevsky and uh, Anton Chekhov and she says that it is these writers who capture uh, the human spirit in the most ideal way. Uh, in fact, she says uh, British writers are quite materialist by comparison. If we are sick of our own materialism, the least considerable of their novelists has by right of birth a natural reverence for the human spirit. In every great Russian writer, we seem to discern the features of a saint. If sympathy for the suffering of others, love towards them, endeavor to reach some goal worthy of the most exacting demands of the spirit constitutes saintliness. Uh, she in fact calls the Russian writers not just spiritualists, but as saints. According to Virginia Woolf, Russian writers are not just spiritualists, but saints because of their capacity to empathize, to uh, try to reach the highest levels of authenticity and uh, to love others in the sense of trying to understand them the best that they can. Uh, and Russian writers uh, are also people who are quite inconclusive. They do not offer you easy answers. Their works end on a note of ambiguity. They are inconclusive. There are several solutions and it is up to the reader to decide. Uh, now, this kind of approach is favored by Virginia Woolf, but she feels that the Russian writers take it too far uh, because their inconclusiveness leads to a sense of gloom and doom and tragedy. While praising Russian writers for creating works that Virginia Woolf considers to be the epitome of uh, spiritual writing. She feels that there is a sense of despair that is very prominent in the works of these writers. And being a British novelist, uh, she is more used to a spirit of resilience than resignation. She is more used to a fighting spirit than a spirit of suffering and surrender, which the Russians seem to champion. So, uh, she ultimately feels that there should be more moderation. Uh, in fiction. So, the proper stuff of fiction is not that of the materialist, the proper stuff of fiction is not that uh, entirely that of the modernist, 
the proper stuff of fiction is not entirely that of the Russians either. So, uh, Virginia Woolf is very clear in her rejection of a certain kind of materialistic formulaic writing and she, she seems to be praising the spiritual writing of some of her contemporaries, uh, particularly James Joyce and Dorothy Richardson. But at the same time, she finds their work lacking in its uh, exploration of the soul. But on the other hand, you find that the works of Russian literature uh, really offer a window into the human soul, uh, while at the same time uh, writing that is free of categorization of the constraints of um, plot and uh, drama and action. But at the same time, Russian fiction is also uh, problematic because of its overall sense of resignation and despair and inconclusiveness. So, in essence, what Virginia Woolf believes to be the proper stuff of fiction and that is a question that she raised in the beginning. Uh, so, she concludes by saying that the proper stuff of fiction does not exist. Everything is the proper stuff of fiction. Every feeling, every thought, every quality of brain and spirit is drawn upon. No perception comes amiss. And if we can imagine the art of fiction come alive and standing in our midst, she would undoubtedly bid us break her and bully her as well as honor and love her, for so her youth is renewed and her sovereignty assured. So, uh, this is a very interesting conclusion because Virginia Woolf does not believe that there is any definitive thing called the proper stuff of fiction. So, what her essay does is not uh, giving the reader definitive answers. In fact, her essay raises more questions and has more ambiguities than definite clear cut answers. So, uh, Virginia Woolf believes that the proper stuff of fiction is when uh, perception is given importance, the things are recorded in as uh, authentic a way as possible. Uh, and she, she sort of uh, personifies the art of fiction. Uh, she says if the art of fiction were to come before us, uh, we would have to love her and honor her, but at the same time break her. And um, this is clearly the agenda of the modernists. So, we uh, can follow those conventions and traditions that help us better understand our present world and our reality. But at the same time, we must question these uh, conventions of the past if we are to create anything new. We must um, subvert them, we must question them, we must to a certain extent rebel against them in order to create something new. And uh, Virginia Woolf believes that uh, this is where the future lies. The art of fiction is something that has to be uh, honored, it has to be loved, but it is also something that has to be constantly revised, um, revisioned and recalibrated for newer times. Thank you.